Hello, and welcome to another episode of Just Played, where I talk about tabletop RPGs I've recently participated in, either as a player or a facilitator. I'm your host, Jim Crocker, and I've just played Night Witches by Jason Morningstar. It's a Powered by the Apocalypse game of Russian women who are bomber pilots in the only all-female Red Army unit in World War II flying missions over... Russia, Poland, and eventually Germany in planes that were left over from World War I in actual World War I biplanes, which was the only aircraft that they were allowed to fly by the Russian government. Technically, officially, in um, uh, communist ideology, everyone was supposed to contribute equally, but in practice during World War II, these women were treated terribly, given only the dregs of what was available, and yet persevered throughout the entire war. And this game is about them. It's really fascinating. This campaign that I'm playing in is called Tonight We Fly! Exclamation point. This is the second season of the full campaign. We've got a two-month schedule lined up, and then there'll be another break before then, but I'm coming in in the kind of second block of games that they've played in the campaign. We played this on the Gauntlet RPG community, gauntlet-rpg.com. If you want to find out what they're doing and maybe get in on some of those games, you can certainly become a member yourself. That's real easy. Date on this game was Saturday, February 5th, so I played this last week as I'm recording this in the morning. Uh, I think for my time, it was like 10 to 1, something like that. So I'm used to playing afternoon or evening, so I was not entirely 100% awake, but uh, still had a great time with this game. So talking about characters, Night Witches has two aspects that make up your character. You've got a playbook or nature, which is unique across the other PCs. Any of you that have played any of those Powered by the Apocalypse games, you're used to the idea of playbooks and how that's kind of, you know, kind of somewhere across between like a character class and a social role and stuff like this. But in this case, there is a nature which kind of ties into a bird. So that's like an owl or a hawk or a pigeon or something like that. And your role which doesn't have to be unique. Those can We can combine those across, and those are things like zealot, adventurer, protector, the role that you serve in the squadron, uh, as opposed to, you know, kind of who you are as a person. I'm Junior Lieutenant Lisa Denisova. My playbook is Hawk, and my role is adventurer. We also have Junior Lieutenant Sarah Rabinovich, an owl zealot, and Junior Lieutenant Sophia Trushina, a sparrow protector. We have a fourth player, but they had to drop before the game. So for this session, it was just the three of us. For our starting situation, this was the first session of a new season. So we've got eight games scheduled for February and March. My character is new to the regiment, but coming in with flying experience, we didn't want to start a from scratch character. So we started me with a couple of advances. So I decided she was moved over from the 587th. We're in the 588th, but the 587th was a mixed gender regiment that flew day missions in medium bombers. So that was a mix of male and female flyers. The 588th that we're part of is the only all women regiment in the Red Army. So I transferred over from that other regiment. So I jumped into the already ongoing drama and pathos of this active airbase. My opening scene was getting off a truck and trying to figure out where to go and who to report to, just like in the actual chaotic situation of a real war. Our GM did a bit of recap to bring us all up to speed, but it was mostly me just stumbling around trying to figure out where to go, which was perfect. That was a great introduction to the chaos uh, that the game is trying to bring across. When we started play, I entered the base and met the duty sergeant, and there was a lot of swearing, and they pointed me towards the planes, but not before I overheard them complaining that they needed someone to fly a food run. Uh, so uh, Sarah, the other one of the other lieutenants, was laid up from an injury, and she spent a scene arguing with the doctor, who is clearly sweet on her, about staying bedridden. The doctor, of course, wanted her to stay in. She's going stir crazy, wants to get out and, you know, get back in her plane. And so there was a kind of, you know, a little personal scene with that, which was pretty neat. So then we cut to Sophia, who learned that most of the regiment's bombs that we had in stock were duds. And so she took off on her own to rectify that situation at another airbase where she met with a male officer who promised to cover her. I'm not exactly sure what their connection is because I'm new, but that was part of the fun is, you know, trying to figure out what's going on with these people and, uh, you know, how close they were to each other. But he promised to uh, make sure that we got some good bombs, and that was what we were looking for. After an embarrassing incident, 
where the mechanics laughed at me for inspecting the planes in my crisp new uniform and shiny metal while they were all there, you know, having been at the front and, you know, wearing whatever they were wearing and, you know, grease on their faces and calluses on their hands here on kind of swanning in. I found Sarah, who by this time had sprung herself from the infirmary, and she agreed to go on the food run with me. We flew out without incident, got there fine, but when we arrived... There was a supply sergeant who was standing in her way, stonewalling her. You're not on my list, you know, he said. So she just completely chewed him a new asshole and returned to find that the new bombs had also arrived and that we would be flying a pretty dangerous mission that night. So then after the day phase was over, we moved on to our night scene where we're going to fly our mission, which starts with a debrief where we learned that we were assigned to cover an infantry retreat from one of our bases by bombing an ordnance depot behind enemy lines. So normally in Night Witches, you scrounge and screw and try to get sleep during the day, and you make your bombing runs at night. You load up three planes with two crew each, so there's generally two or three NPCs along for the ride because you usually got three or four PCs, kind of a typical table for Night Witches. So this time we had three of us player characters and three regimental NPCs. Now, these are named characters who the other players knew who they were and kind of each of them had some personality and stuff like this. So typically you will need to find the target via a wayfinding role. I built my character to be really good at this part, so we nailed that role to fly to the target and find it without any difficulty, and, uh, you know, there's the depot laid out before us. Normally, the next step would be making an attack run to try and land your bombs on the target. In this case, though, for this particular mission, because the depot was well-guarded, we had to endure enemy fire before we could make our attack, basically get shot at and, and live through that before we can drop our bombs. So both of us that were actually rolling in the two planes that had PCs made mixed success rolls. For those of you that have played any kind of PBTA, you understand that seven to nine means you succeed, but there's going to be some kind of cost or you don't get everything that you want. I chose to have our plane be damaged, so our landing was going to be difficult. And both me and Lisa, who was in the plane with me, got marked, like capital M marked, which is sort of a narrative countdown towards retiring your character, as opposed to more concrete in the moment physical harm which is also always an option. You can choose to just get hurt instead if that's what you want, get wounded. But we survived and nailed the attack run and sent the depot up in a very satisfying fireball complete with exploding fuel drums launched into the air and screaming Nazis. So that was pretty cool. Our plane ran out of fuel before making it back because that was what the hit did to us. You know, we were leaking fuel the whole way as we're trying to make it back. It became clear either we could land it on our own or just run out of fuel and crash. So we decided to voluntarily try and put it down somewhere where, uh, you know, we could still walk away from the landing. So I had to land it in a narrow fire break in the, you know, this swath cut through the forest to uh, try and uh, stop any, you know, sort of forest fires that were headed towards the base. And we hiked back to the base. Sarah managed to land her own plane with a chunk of the port wing missing, so it was definitely a any landing you can walk away from night all the way around for all of us. So our closing situation, we finished with all three of our PC pilots alive and ambulatory, which is not necessarily how every night phase ends in a game of Night Witches. It looks like we're going to change duty stations and move on to the next airbase, which in this case is Pashkovskia, near the northeastern coast of the Black Sea, where we will be supporting the fleet in the battle for the Caucasus against the Nazis. As far as my favorite moment from one of the other player characters goes... We're just getting to know each other because I'm new to the regiment, so I didn't get to spend much time with Sophia, but my supply run with Sarah got to showcase the zealot role, which is the political true believer role. It can be easy to default to being a crabby ideologue, to being someone who's like really easy to hate, but for that scene, Sarah's player eviscerated the lazy shithead supply sergeant with this diamond hard lecture about duty and the respect that she was owed as a Soviet officer. And it was just perfect for the game. She was 100% in the right, but in a way that will almost certainly come back to completely bite us all in the ass later on 
whenever we have to deal with the bureaucracy again. So it was beautiful. It was like, got us what we needed at the moment at the cost of almost certainly, you know, getting a reputation as being difficult to deal with in a way that just, I think is, was really perfect. A favorite moment from the GM, our GM, Brandon, is an experienced LARPer. So he's really good at just dropping into and out of character. I really appreciated that in our very first scene. He just came right at me with the regiment's own exasperated personnel sergeant who just spewed military-grade profanity right from the jump, setting the tone. It also made it clear that this was an established thing in their game and that I was free to drop as many F-bombs as I wanted in response if that's where I wanted to go, which, spoiler, it very much was. So yeah, great tone setting right from the jump in that very first scene. I really appreciated it. Something I noticed about the game, I've run an entire campaign of Night Witches, also on the gauntlet. It was the entire war, and it took us something like 16 months of sustained weekly play to get through the entire thing, taking weeks off here and there and some breaks for the holidays and stuff like that. Returning to it as a player, I was struck once again by how tight this design is and how elegantly it drives play towards creating this true ensemble piece. The social contract for a game like this is a little different than a typical adventure RPG. The story is really about this historical event that has completely subsumed the characters' lives. That's what the game is about. We all agree that we're going to embody our characters to the best of our abilities and play, and that those characters are going to be important, and we're going to act like we can change the course of events. But on a player level, we understand that just a couple of unlucky die rolls could mean the abrupt death of that character. It's different than a D&D style game, like an F20 kind of thing, even some other PBTA games where death might be on the table, because it's not like a series of tactical mishaps leads to eventual attrition, which then you get that unlucky die roll and your character goes down. In Night Witches, no matter how good you are, you get caught in the wrong spotlight on the wrong mission and you're vaporized 300 feet over Poland, no recourse, no saving throw, go ahead and make a new character. But unlike your rogue getting shanked under the moat house in Hamlet or something like that, that PC's death will have real consequences that ripple through future games even as you take on a new PC. So the emotional stakes of that for the other characters really mean something in a way that it almost never has in any D&D style game I've ever played. It's an ideal setup for the sort of open table play that we see a lot of on The Gauntlet, where players can drop in and out of games as schedules and circumstances allow. I can drop into this campaign without a lot of debrief and catch up because that's what war is actually like with new fodder for the cannons arriving to replace the fallen. I can catch up to who everyone is and get swept up into ongoing interpersonal dramas exactly the way a new recruit would. It's definitely not how I want to spend all my games, but every now and then it is really cool to not know what's happening and just play to find out what everyone else already knows like you would if you were really in that situation. That's it for this week. You can follow me on Twitter at Jim Likes Games, which is also the name of my YouTube channel. Look for me at conventions, working with my friends at Indie Press Revolution, and listen for me on other shows in the Curmudgeons and Dragons family of gaming podcasts. This episode was written by me, Jim Crocker, and it's produced by Jason Portizo. That's it for this week. So if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go play another game. Thank you for listening to Curmudgeons and Dragons. Please share this with your favorite adventurers. Leave a review on Apple and follow us on social media. All links can be found at curmudgeonsanddragons.com. Practice safe adventuring, my friends.